Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to talk about Bane, who I think is a bit of a sleeper OP pick so far at TI-10. He has been picked 16 times in the group stage and he has a 68% win rate there, 4-0 and as a position 4. But in the main stage, he's been picked 11 times so far with an 82% win rate. 2-2 two and two as a position 4 there, so about 50%. But that means he's undefeated as a position 5 so far in the main stage. In your pubs, he's actually not that popular. So down in Herald, you'll see the pick rate's pretty low, and so is the win rate. But actually, as you make your way up to Divine and higher, the pick rate goes up a lot, and so does the win rate. So I think this is a hero that if you guys learn to play, you could easily pick up some pub wins because he's kind of the anti-carry maybe that's why he's not good in herald because there's too many carries to counter but the higher you go the meta right now is that everyone is kind of funneling resources to a carry for a quick early tempo and then bane just grips him and then he nightmare he nightmares the second carry and so he just takes out two people on his own every fight and that is crazy it even pierces bkb so let's learn how to do that now here in the laning stage uh you might block the camps if you feel the need to uh, which he's done here. Usually, you grab a couple mangoes, but if you think they're going to cast a lot of spells, like a weaver, you can grab a stick. And you can see he's kind of a strong laner. So TB, he's also a pretty good laner, but Elsie and Weaver is known to be a really strong lane, and yet Bane and TB are able to beat them out. Because your spell, Brain Sap, is a fantastic trading ability. You do damage, and you heal yourself. So you can see Bane here, uh, even as a position 5, can play pretty aggressively, doesn't mind if he takes too much harass, because every time he uses Brain Sap, he's going to recover some of that HP. So he doesn't have to be as worried about how effective he is in these trades. You still want to be effective, you know, don't go crazy, but you can push the limits a little bit. Now Nightmare's really cool, uh, this is kind of unique to Weaver, where you can sleep him through the Chikuchi, but the setup for Nightmare allows Bane to auto-attack without waking up the hero, that lets you get, in fact, let's watch that again. Sorry, I kind of paused at a weird time. If your teammates do damage to Weaver, the sleep ends. But Bane can attack during the nightmare. This is one of the things that makes him a really strong laner. Even though the mana cost is really expensive, if you have the mana through sticks or mangoes, you can get a bunch of damage off by combining the Brain Sap Burst plus like three auto attacks through Nightmare because it's about four second duration. And then the first second, they're kind of invincible. Uh, you can't really target them. That's kind of a trade winner. Like, oh, I'm just going to get free auto attacks in and a spell that lets me heal up any damage you've done to me. Like, this is why Bane is such a good laner. And just another quick example of that. They both start out full health. They start trading a little bit. Oh, did I lose health? No, I didn't. Bane is pretty much at full health and Weaver is at half health. Weaver... Kind of a fragile hero, so usually it's not this extreme, but you get the idea. That swing is what lets you win trades every time Brain Sap is up. A sleep is not a, or nightmare is not a uh, typical stun because it actually sleeps the opponent, but it lets you do things like this, like secure runes and then lets you auto attack, almost getting killed sometimes. Again, your teammates won't be able to necessarily help unless they have an ability that needs to be set up. We'll try to find an example of that later where you nightmare them first and then that lets someone like Lena land an easy stun. Um, and you're not worried about waking up through the sleep because they're now stunned. How about I actually show you guys instead of just telling you so you can go ahead and sleep your opponent and then that lets someone like Snapfire get in range to land her stun. Pretty easy setup. Um, and also you saw that Crystal Main was trying to deward. You sleep them, you can kill their sentry first, and then start hitting them if you have to. So, I mean, you can do that with any stun, but just giving you guys some ideas of how you can use Nightmare. Now, as soon as you hit six, that's pretty much a free kill if the enemy is not all grouped together and they don't have a way to cancel your ult. So Legion Commander is actually considered a counter to Bane because as strong as your ultimate is, it can be dispelled by something like Legion Commander's press the attack. But that doesn't mean you can't still play this hero. For one, you can grip the Legion Commander like you saw in this clip. She can't press her, press the attack herself in those cases. But other times, you'll just have to wait for her to use those abilities. And I'll try to show you a couple of examples of that through this game. Another use for Nightmare is to just take someone out of a fight for a little bit and let your team focus other heroes before going back. So here, you see them kill the Morphling. And then he's going to Nightmare the Weaver. And then let's finish up this Crystal Maiden kill. And guess what? I'm going to attack Weaver a couple times. You guys get over here, get in position. Yeah, everyone huddle up. And now we'll kill the Weaver. So 
it lasts seven seconds. You can use it at the start of the fight, at the like midway through the fight. Uh, it, it depends on the fight, but you can just remove someone from for seven seconds unless the enemy has some way to deal with that. So if you find someone isolated like the Weaver, you're just like, hey, sit there for seven seconds. We're gonna deal with the rest of your team and we'll come back to you later. And just to really emphasize how good Nightmare can be, because it lasts so long, it's even long enough for teammates to TP in after you sleep someone who's pushed out a little too far on their own. So for many supports, cores don't have to be scared, like against the Crystal Maiden. Uh, I was gonna say Vengeful Spirit, she's kind of a core now. Uh, but many stuns don't last that long, you know? So like a core might push all the way up to here, and then they get stunned by the support, but they get to leave by the time anyone teleports in. But not against Nightmare. This spell is seven seconds. Bane also features replay bugs like this one, unique to him, where you just keep hearing the Nightmare and Fiend's Grip noise no matter how long it goes. Ah, no, we're gone. Nice. I didn't find an example of this in the game, but I wanted to run through a couple other nightmare mechanics with you guys real quick. Notice Crystal Maiden's uh, health bar disappears for a second, so I think I briefly mentioned this, but Nightmare has actually got a very high skill cap because you can use it to save heroes with this very first second of the ability. They can dodge damage instances, you can get them out of disable, so for example, if Shadow Shaman is shackling here, you can cast a spell and cancel it immediately, and it frees them from the the stun uh in this case because they're like shackled but other times like if she were in fact we, i could just show you if she were hexed it doesn't really work that way she'll still be hexed um so it's it doesn't like free you from every stun it's not a it's not a dispel but there's like a couple things you can save your allies from like that it's also a very good i, I said legion was a counter to bane but it actually kind of also works the other way as well because if you nightmare one target then when she attacks then she waits then they wait and so it kind of like just goes back and forth for a bit. And maybe the other teammates of the uh, Legion will come and kill off your Crystal Maiden, but at least it won't be through the usual right click killing each other. And that can be very useful if Legions build blade mail and they're trying to get your core to like kill himself on the blade mail, you can nightmare one of them. And unless the enemy team uh, interrupts it, then you're probably gonna survive the duel. Uh, you also saw me do it, but I didn't say it. You can end nightmare whenever you want, whether it's on allies or enemies. So it lasts seven seconds, but you don't have to, especially what this will happen a lot is your teammates will come up and try to attack the Legion too soon and they'll take the nightmare. And so in that case, you're gonna have to free those idiots from themselves and end the spell by just casting it again, the same button. Um, now nightmare lasts seven seconds, but as you notice there, it can be transferred by attack clicking your ally. So if you just right click, doesn't work attack click it works and you'll notice even though the duration was about to end when it switched to the legion or the shadow shaman it refreshes the duration so this spell can technically go on forever usually the way to counter bane so if you're ever playing against banes who saw this video if you see nightmare go off on a core you should free them from it um but if it's about to end like as you get towards this end duration you're like i don't know you can stay asleep for one more second rather than me have to be asleep for seven seconds kind of depending on context uh, but usually if it gets cast like right away on a core, it's usually worth it for a support to like immediately remove it. Um, and then again, if it accidentally makes a way to your one of your own teammates, just go ahead and end the ability. Here's a more typical build. Oh, also Bane has a taunt, incredibly important for pub games. More common build with like two mangoes and some decent like stats, regen, and you'll right click a lot. So you can go ahead and take fairy fire if you want. It's a nice like bait tool let's be honest whoever checks the enemy's items so then they think they're about to kill you but between nightmare or sorry between brain sap and then the fairy fire surprise you actually have a burst of health and you end up killing them he has nightmare here because he had to try to use it to save his teammate didn't work out it's going to be really awkward in the laning stage you really do want to start with brain sap instead it's much cheaper so actually i'll go ahead and let you guys uh, know try not to use nightmare too much in the laning stage it's incredibly expensive you really only want to use it when you have to so either because you're saving a teammate or because you started it with it level one, so you're going to go ahead and use it like here, uh, make him miss a couple last hits, things like that. But usually the way you'll use it in the laning stage is that you'll just try to get like right clicks and trades with brain sap. And then as they get close to like half health, somewhere like there, and you think, oh, I can get a kill here. That's where you will commit brain sap to get those like three free auto attacks. That's like 100, 100 plus damage and then like a brain sap. And then hopefully your carry helps out a little bit. Um, that's usually how Nightmare gets used, only when needed, uh, because otherwise it's just so expensive. It's uh, pretty much half your mana pool, whereas Brain Sap is only 100 mana, at least at level one, and that's much more manageable than 
uh, this 165 mana cost. I do want to clarify though, even though you're a strong laner, you're not necessarily looking for kills as Bane. Uh, is like his toolkit's not the best to like surprise the enemy and burst them like others. Now in this case, you can see he is going to get a kill, but you'll notice he started this 1v2 and he was actually not dying right away because between Brain Sap and Nightmare, you actually have like a decent amount of uh, survivability on your own, plus some good stats and slightly faster than normal movement speed. So what you're really looking to do in most laning stages is just be strong and kind of win the laning stage. Make a lot of space for your carry, not necessarily by kills, but just by this constant right-click harass, draw their attention to you, because you're not going to die on your own like a Crystal Maiden. You're Bane. You will uh, brain sap them. You'll nightmare them to get away. And you'll just make space for your carry, sometimes having to... Uh, possibly save them with Nightmare, like so here. You just Nightmare an enemy and your carry gets to run away. You saw him considering using Nightmare on the uh, Spectre if he had to, but decided the Spectre was gonna live, so he'll use the Nightmare on Tiny so Tiny can't chase instead. That kind of call is hard. You'll definitely mess it up. Like, let's get that out of the way. It's a high skill ceiling ability on Nightmare, so that means we're gonna make some mistakes. Bane requires a lot of good positioning to play the hero because otherwise your ult just gets canceled. So for example, he tries to ult the, the Juggernaut here and it gets immediately canceled by Avalanche. That will happen sometimes. Uh, you kind of have to, I don't think he was expecting a full duration ult. He was hoping for a little longer than that, but that is what you have to be a little worried about. You have to see who on the enemy team can cancel your your ultimate and then you have to wait for those stuns to go out or just know that you're positioned far enough away from them to be able to use your ultimate and one good way to make sure you get to do that notice where he's positioned he's hiding in the trees if the enemy doesn't know where you are they can't get in position to cancel your ultimate and you're gonna let teammates go first so that they'll think oh i can go on this guy and then you can initiate so check this out, he nightmares the tiny, so we're gonna remove him from the fight for seven seconds, we said, right? And then he's gonna go ult a different hero. He doesn't want Snapfire to be able to kill the egg, so he's using Fiend's Grip on Snapfire, because otherwise Snapfire would solo kill the egg. And in this way, he's gotten, he's affected two heroes, so Tiny did end up dying, but whether or not Tiny died, like say he just nightmared Tiny over here and then came to Fiend's Grip, Snapfire. They're getting to take this fight 5v4 because the carry Tiny is just nightmared somewhere else. In this case, it was the setup and they got Tiny killed. Um, so you don't have to, like you can use Nightmare to set up your Fiend's Grip, that's perfectly acceptable, but you can also use them on separate targets so that on your own, you're removing two different heroes. Um, especially if there's only like one hero who can cancel your ultimate, you can nightmare that hero. In this case, like Tiny can cancel his ultimate and then he fiends gripped another hero. And then that only leaves Puck left to stop the fiends grip unless one of them, uh, the Crystal Maiden or the Juggernaut are able to actually just kill uh, Bane. And here's another example of that. Nightmare the Crystal Maiden, remove her and then fiends grip the Tiny. The, the core we really want to kill. We'll make sure he gets killed off and then yeah crystal man's gonna die too conveniently but really the idea is that we're controlling two different heroes at once your ability in feeble you're kind of just gonna throw that on cores it does work on roshan so you can make it a little easier to take roshan but it reduces attack that's usually the main feature uh, so you just like throw it on whatever core is doing a lot of right click damage but it's also going to reduce healing and regen so if they have like uh, high regen, uh, maybe an IO, you know, throw it on the IO so he can't heal his teammates as much. Let's talk about item build and skill build real quick. So we mentioned the starting items. You're just probably going to take a lot of early game fighting items because you're looking to be annoying, harass a lot. You probably need a good amount of consumables, uh, maybe a stick, maybe a raindrop, those kind of items. Now you're almost always going to go straight into arcane boots. I mean, you can buy like the small items like the, the magic stick, the wind lace, like, but your first core item is going to be the arcane boots into an aether lens. At that point, you can choose to build tranquil boots if you need to. If you decide to start with tranquil boots, then right after that, you're going to build an aether lens anyways. Uh, in most cases, just because the cast range on Bane is a little shorter than you want it to be. And the further you are away, the harder it is to cancel your ultimate. Uh, you can save teammates from farther away. There's just a lot of value to aether lens. Your spells are also pretty expensive, so you kind of need the mana. Now, if you choose to skip the Aether Lens or you finish the Aether Lens after that as a position five, you're going to go for like typical support stuff. So like the Glimmer, the Force Staffs, um, like Medallion, Solar Crest, things like that if you need them, Aeon Disc. Um, now, you can go for a BKB. So if the only thing that cancels your ult 
is uh, all stoppable by BKB, and your ult is pretty important. Like, oh, we really just need to kill this guy, and we win the team fights. And you don't really need like the glimmers, the force. You can go for a BKB second item. Position four Bane is actually exactly the same as the startup, but after the Aether Lens, you're gonna go for an Agonims. And this will just let you ult way more. You get a little bit more farm as position four Bane, and your ult will be a lower cooldown and harder to cancel. So it just ends up being really powerful, and you'll just look to like snowball kills in the late game by piercing BKB, ult this guy. They're dead for like 100 seconds, but your ult's only 60 seconds. And so then you just go find someone else to kill, and you just keep snowballing kills like that. When it comes to the skill build, again, it's the same as position four or five. You're gonna generally take one point in Brain Sap into the Nightmare Brain Sap, Max, Nightmare, and Brain Sap, taking your ult when you can. Enfeebles, really not that useful at the start of the game. So you pretty much max these two abilities. Uh, maxing Nightmare first because you wanna really lower this cooldown and increase the duration and the cast range. It gives you more to do. Outside of the laning stage, you don't really need more points in Brain Sap. It's this Nightmare that gives you a lot more utility as a support. For your talents, Level 10, you just take whatever you need. You know, if they got a lot of physical damage, you take your armor. A lot of magic, magic resist. Level 15, you can take Brain Sap cooldown, but if they have a hero who's very mana dependent, someone like Medusa, Morphling, Storm Spirit, those kind of heroes, then you can go ahead and take this talent. Fiend's Grip already drains mana, but with this talent, you will drain 60% of their max mana if you get the full duration off. And if you make it to 25 and you have this plus five second, 110% of their mana. So they will have no mana left over. And for a, for a hero like Storm Spirit, like what's he do without mana? For a hero like Medusa, she loses all her mana. So she loses all her tankiness. And then she dies after that. So there are games where this talent is pretty good, depending how much the enemy needs their mana. If they don't need it, then you take the brain sap cooldown. Level 20 is pretty much always the nightmare cooldown. Um, I really don't know why you would take this movement speed because we said like this is all your utility. So getting this down to 10 seconds means that you have it up 70% of the time. And that's pretty crazy. And then level 25, it's actually kind of hard to get off 11 seconds worth of Fiend's Grip. So if you're like pretty... If you're in the fight for a long time, you can take the Brain Sap damage and heal, but this is generally the talent that's taken anyways, just because in case you do get to ult longer, like that's pretty good in the late game fights to guarantee a kill on someone. Position four Bane is honestly not that different from position five Bane. You see, you still win trades with the enemy supports, and you're just going to be that annoyance in the laning stage, constantly harassing, doing pulls because if they come contest you, you're happy to fight. Here's the kill potential I was talking about when someone is about half health. Like, look at your auto attack. It's pretty, it's pretty chunky. So you use Nightmare, and that lets you get off a few couple extra auto attacks, and then you eventually use Brain Sap to wrap up the kill like that. So just save Nightmare until you see those opportunities. As the position four, you have a little bit higher farm priority, so when there's some downtime, you can farm camps like you see him doing here. Well, he was trying to protect his ward for a little bit, but now he's gonna go back to farming the camp. You wanna find a ways to sneak farm a little bit. Bane really is not good at flash farming, so you will get most of your gold from participating in fights using Nightmare and Fiend's Grip, but when there is a chance to steal a little bit of farm, push out a lane, things like what you're seeing on the screen now, then you wanna do that because that's gonna help you get your Aether Lens and then your Aghanims, which is really why you're playing position four Bane. So the power of the Aghanims is that it reduces the cooldown to 55 seconds. Here you see him use Enfeeble and then his ultimate to Fiend's Grip the Lina. It gets canceled by the Silencer. Silencer's pretty annoying. If you wanna if you wanna ban someone in the laning or in the draft phase, probably ban Silencer. He's pretty he's pretty irritating. But even though this fight, um, the Fiend's Grip doesn't look like it's so hot, the reduced cooldown means that his team is able to start going again. Uh, much sooner than usual. Like usually you'd have to wait an extra 45 seconds, but because it is a reduced cooldown, it's already up as they want to push high ground and Lena is still dead. Usually he'd still be waiting for this and it would only just come up as Lena is about to respawn. But now the enemy team has to respect them. This is going to seem like uh, not so interesting because in the end he doesn't even use Fiend's Grip, but I swear it is the threat of the Fiend's Grip that Team Spirit had to respect here, and so they can't even approach. Lena's dead, and they know if they walk up too close, there's another BKB piercing Fiend's Grip that could get one of them killed. So they're able to take the racks without any contest here. Now here he uses Fiend's Grip to help his teammate get away, and so if we didn't highlight it before, the Agonims creates these other illusions, 
and they all have to be stopped to prevent this uh, fiend script. So you see, he's actually running away already. He used it, and now he's running. But because the illusions are both alive, here, Tiny stops one illusion, but the other one's still going. So Lena is still stuck in the fiend's grip, and that's going to help his team try to get away. Unfortunately, Invoker's still going to die here. Yeah, but he did his best. That's what you can do with this. Back on position five, Bane here. I just wanted to show you some nightmare dodging. So you see he nightmares himself to dodge that stomp. Uh, there's lots of little instances like that where you can see spells coming in. Uh, you can even do it to like Lena and Lion Finger, which is much harder to do, but it is possible. But other things like Venge Stun, maybe Monkey King Stun, when you see him coming, you can try to dodge him yourself or for your teammates. We're going to wrap up here with the final example. The secret to playing Bane is like twofold. One, have a decent laning stage. You don't always have to win. Like sometimes you'll be against really strong laners and you'll have a really weak carry, but you want to make your your presence felt because you are a strong laner. So be annoying in the lane, get as much as you can out of that lane, hopefully winning it, but at least even in a losing lane, you should be able to get something out of that. Then after that, when you hit six, you know, find pickoffs as you can. And then it's in the late game where you really shine, where you secure kills on the enemy carries, their mids, their very important heroes that you're gonna lock down through BKB with Fiend's Grip, letting your team kill them. And the way to do that is through good positioning and patience. You want to make sure the enemy can't cancel your ability. So actually, there's several ways he could have his Fiend's Grip canceled. Right now, he doesn't have a BKB or an Ags, so he just has to be very careful with how he uses his ultimate. And so when he initiates with this initial Nightmare, and then Tidehunter uses this Ravage, everyone who could cancel his ultimate is zoned really far away, and so now he's going to get to just Fiend's Grip from, he was hoping to Fiend's Grip from the high ground, so it's even harder to see him and reach him. But I think he had to step down a little bit to reach this. But you see how the whole enemy is all over here. So he's going to get the full ultimate off, and this Medusa is going to die. The team can't even get to them. Now, of course, there's a Monkey King ult helping him out, but that's kind of the point. Like, he is using his team to be this wall between him and the enemy to make sure he gets the full fiend's grip off and as long as you use it to kill off an important figure usually a core hero but sometimes there's a very important support you could get killed as well whoever it is when you get them killed through their bkbs it's so irritating for them and that is what makes bane really strong right now in my opinion like Everyone is putting all their gold on these cores like Medusa and she could do nothing there and her team couldn't help at all That's usually the counter to Bane is the team helping against Bane But you can still work around that through positioning and through patience So as long as you keep that in mind, I think you guys can win games with Bane So give him a shot guys. Like I said, I think he's kind of the sleeper pick There's a lot of other like really popular supports But he has a really good win rate and he's kind of like flying under the radar He even got a little bit nerfed before this, but it wasn't enough. So give it a shot guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video